Welcome to the Tarantula Collective, my name is Richard. And these are the top 10 spookiest creatures here in the collection. If you enjoy videos like this, as well as species specific care and husbandry videos, then be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Now it's almost Halloween and this is my favorite time of year, so I thought it would be a perfect time to introduce you all to some of the creepy crawlies that I've picked up recently and have here in the collection. So we're gonna be counting down from number 10. I'm gonna show you the things that still kind of spook me out. Now if you have any of these in your collection or you have some other kind of creature that spooks you out, be sure to tell me about it down below in the comments. Now this first species we'll be talking about isn't really horrifying, in fact it's kind of pretty, but it still creeps me out. This species is from North America and it has hundreds of legs and it lives off of a diet of rotting, decaying wood. I just got some of these at the Tinley NARBC. They are Florida Ivory Millipedes. Now you can find this species down in Florida and they grow to about four inches in size and live anywhere between five to 10 years. They're not venomous, they're not fast, they don't bite, but there's just something about them, seeing all those legs moving in tandem and rolling around and coiling up, it just kind of creeps me out. Now number nine on the list, I'm actually splitting between two different species. They look very similar and a lot of people get them mixed up with each other. Sometimes even in the hobby when you're buying them, they're mislabeled and people are buying one thinking they're the other. Now these do have a little bit of venom. They are a little bit quicker, but they're also kind of clumsy. They don't see very well. When I'm down here in the basement late at night editing videos or messing around with things on the computer, I can hear them banging and clanging on the side of their enclosure and it, it's kind of creepy. And doing some macro photography on these species and really getting in close on their mouth and eyes, they're definitely something from a nightmare. But at the same time, I really enjoy having them in my collection and I'm growing really fond of them. So number nine is going to be the Emperor Scorpion or the Asian Forest Scorpion. Now the Emperor Scorpion can grow to about seven and a half inches, though mine's not nearly that size yet. They have sensory hairs on their pincers and tail to help them find prey by detecting vibrations in the air and ground. Their venom is not dangerous for humans. In fact, some molecules that make up their venom are currently under research as scientists believe that they could have properties that can defend against malaria and other harmful bacteria. Now the forest scorpion is a little more aggressive than the emperor scorpion. And the Asian forest scorpion has a black stinger whereas the emperor has more of a yellowish amber one. Now the emperor has larger claws proportional to its body and the claws have a more bumpy and granulated texture. The emperor scorpion is from Africa and the Asian forest is from, well, Asia. Now the emperors do burrow a little more and are generally more docile. And something else cool about these species is they both glow under UV light. Now, I don't think they necessarily like having the UV light shine on them, but it does kind of look cool. Now, number eight is a species I was very trepidatious about ever getting. In fact, I think it was the first species of invert that I got that wasn't a tarantula. But when you see these guys, it's really hard not to be impressed. They kind of look like a tarantula, but they're not technically in that family of arachnids. They're very fast, voracious eaters, but they're more like a spider spider than they are a tarantula. So I'm still kind of trying to get used to them. So number eight is the Columbian funnel web spider.
Now number seven is a true spider, and then this definitely was the first true spider I added to my collection. As a spiderling, it wasn't really that creepy, but as it's grown, it's gotten very colorful and got these really long, spiky looking hairs coming off its legs, and it will take down just about anything. Whether I've dropped in crickets, roaches, mealworms, I've seen pictures of them eating bees and all kinds of insects. And they do have a venomous bite that may cause you a little bit of pain. When you see this spider, you're gonna think it's as creepy as it is beautiful. So number seven is the green link spider from Madagascar. Now number six is another new species to my collection. I got this while I was in Pittsburgh checking out a reptile expo before heading to Tinley. Now I had been considering getting one of these for months and when I walked up to a table to get some isopods, I saw it sitting there, I was like, it's a match made in heaven, let's do it. But as soon as I got it home and started taking pictures of it, it was honestly starting to creep me out. Now it's venom does pack a little bit of a punch so I wouldn't suggest handling it or getting stung, but it is a very cool scorpion. So number six on my list is gonna be the Arizona Bark Scorpion. Now this scorpion can live up to six years, and even though they don't burrow, many people can find them in their homes in the area that they're endemic because they only need about a sixteenth of an inch opening to squeeze in. This scorpion is the most venomous scorpion in North America, and a sting can cause severe pain that lasts for over 24 hours, but it is not deadly. One of the creepiest things about this scorpion is that during US nuclear testing, scorpions were found near ground zero with no recorded adverse effects. And like the emperor scorpion and the Asian forest scorpion, these two are reactive under UV light. But that's not because they're radioactive. Now number five is a species that I haven't shown you all yet because I just got it about a week ago. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing out of, what are you doing out of your enclosure? Come on now. Oh, that is, that is not cool. I'm trying to shoot a video here. We gotta, we gotta put you back, come on. I don't even know how you got out. So this species looks like a scorpion, but it's technically an arachnid. And while I was unboxing it, it shot this acid out of its back end and got all over my hand. Now this thing truly looks like it came from a horror movie. And though it's not venomous and the acid it shot is pretty much just vinegar, it's still pretty freaking creepy. Of course, if you haven't figured it out, number five is the Vingaroon. While Vingaroons have a scorpion-like body shape with their flat extended abdomens and spiky clawed pedipalps, which are essentially like their pincers, they are not closely related to scorpions at all. Vingaroons are found in the warmer latitudes of North America, throughout Central and South America, as well as subtropical and tropical Asian countries. There's even a lone species found in tropical Africa. Now, Vingaroons are entirely nocturnal, and they only use their hind three pairs of legs for walking. Their front pair of legs have evolved into long, thin, highly sensitive feelers that scan the ground in front of them. Now their tail, or that long, straight kind of rod that's at the back end of them, is used to feel around the back of the animal. 
Now they have glands that are right at the junction of the rear body segment, right at the base of the telson. Now these glands produce a liquid mixture of a bunch of different chemicals, but the stuff essentially is acetic acid, which is basically vinegar. Jeez, guys, seriously? Now number four is a particularly horrendous creature. And as spiky and venomous and, and just overall evil they are, they are extremely fascinating to watch and I'm very glad I got them in my collection. And kind of like with the scorpions, I'm split number four between two different species. I just picked these up from Isopod Source while I was at the NARBC and I'm already wanting to get some more. So the fourth creepiest creature down here in my basement is going to be a tie between the Horde King Assassin Bug and the White Spotted Assassin Bug. Now these bugs live in dead trees during the day and they take down their prey with a powerful and disabling venom. It has a rigid rostrum, kind of like a mosquito, that it pierces into its prey and releases this venom liquefying the inside of the victim. It then sucks out the nutrients for sustenance. In addition to that, the Horde King has stiffened spines on its thorax and both species have a volatile defensive fluid unnerving stridulation, which is where they make a threatening noise with their back legs. And they have the ability to inject and potentially spray its venom for self-defense. So this definitely isn't a bug I would suggest handling. I hear their bite is very painful and I don't want to get sprayed by anything. All right, this is getting out of hand. You need all, y'all need to stop. Now the next species on my list is another nocturnal arachnid that comes straight out of the horror movies. Though its name suggests that it is a scorpion, and some people call them crickets, they are an arachnid. Now even though they're creepy and will eat almost any insect that's in front of them, they are harmless to humans. And if you haven't figured it out yet, number three is the tailless whip scorpion. Like the Vingaroon, the tailless whip scorpion walks on six legs and the other two legs have evolved into very sensitive receptors. They have very poor eyesight, so they use those receptors to smell and explore their surroundings as well as corral in their prey. Now their pedipalps have evolved into pinchers that they use to grab and hold its prey while it's eating. They mainly stay in caves and under leaves and debris, but some will move into houses, especially in tropical and subtropical areas. And probably the creepiest thing about these is seeing them really extend those receptors out three to four times the size of their body and then they move sideways like a crab. It really just throws off your senses and, and will creep you out for sure. But again, they are harmless to humans and they're fun to handle and take out and show people whenever they come and visit. Would you like some wine? Now for number two, we've got another tie. Now these species are very similar and they both really scared me for a very long time. In fact, the main reason I got them is the main reason I got my first tarantula. I'm trying to overcome my fear. These things are fast, unpredictable, and some of them have venom that can seriously pack a punch. They're a burrowing species, so you don't always see them out in the open, but when they are out, they're running around like crazy trying to climb the walls and, and it's really hard to predict where they're actually gonna go. Now the two that I have in my collection are from two different sides of the world. One is from here in North America and like a New World Tarantula, its venom is not that potent. But the other one is on the other side of the planet, kind of like an Old World Tarantula 
it definitely has some serious venom. And I am talking about the Vietnamese orange leg centipede and the Sonoran Desert or the tiger centipede. Now the Vietnamese orange leg centipede can grow up to eight inches. Both of them are nervous, aggressive, and fast. And the Vietnamese centipede is definitely venomous. And the Vietnamese has a lot more potent venom than the Sonoran. Now centipedes can feed on insects, lizards, frogs, and even small rodents. Now millipedes have two pairs of legs on each of the body segments, but centipedes only have a single pair of legs per segment. And if a centipede ever finds itself in the grip of a bird or some other predator, it can often escape by sacrificing a few legs. Tell me that's not creepy. And a centipede's first set of legs are venomous fangs, which they use to inject paralyzing venom into their prey. And as creepy and spooky and scary as these things can be, I have read that they do make very good mothers. They're very attentive to their young, so they can't be all bad. Oh, come on, this is not even funny anymore. Seriously, I'm trying to shoot a YouTube video here. Jeez. Before we get to the number one spookiest creature here in my collection, I got an honorable mention I want to throw out there. This is another new addition. It's another non-tarantula spider that I'm just now starting to warm up to. I chickened out getting this species a couple of times when I was placing orders, and then when I had mustered up the courage, they were sold out. But luckily when I was at Tinley hanging out the Fear Not booth, meeting you guys, shooting a video, I saw that they had some available for sale, so I went ahead and picked one up. And it is a huntsman spider. But not just any huntsman spider. This is the Heteropoda David Bowie. Now, if it was just a huntsman spider, I probably wouldn't have ever worked up the nerve. But anything named after David Bowie has got to be all right. So I had to get this beautiful thing added to my collection. And even though it's fascinating to watch, it is extremely fast. It does have some venom that you don't want to mess with. And it moves in ways that are very unlike a tarantula. So I'm not quite prepared. And I, I still get a little nervous when I'm interacting with it. But it seemed too beautiful to really be scary or creepy. So I didn't want to add it to the list. But I definitely think it deserves an honorable mention. Because as comfortable as I've become with most of my tarantulas, this thing, I'm, I'm still very mindful when I'm interacting with it. All right, that brings us to the number one spookiest species down here in the basement. Now, as you saw in the beginning of the video, we decorated the entire front of our house for Halloween this year with all kinds of skulls and skeletons and spiders and spider web. And it's funny to me that it creeps these people out coming up on the porch and little kids are getting scared because there's some fake spiders over there in the corner. Little do they know that just below their feet in the basement, there are hundreds of real ones. Now, I enjoy living in this neighborhood so it's not something I'm gonna to broadcast to my neighbors. But the irony of the situation does not escape me. Now, if you have a creepy non-tarantula invert in your collection that didn't make my list, be sure to tell me about it down below in the comments because I'd really like to know what you got and what I might need to add to my collection in the future. And if you like my shirt, you can get your own. I've got all kinds of cool Tarantula Collective merchandise available on my website, thetarantulacollective.com. And while you're on the website, you can find links to the Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and Facebook groups. So if you wanna know what's going on with me in between these videos, 
be sure to follow me on those platforms. Now this species is a species that's actually not even in the room with me right now. Everybody's got a line in the sand and when I ordered some tarantulas from Fear Not, they included this as a freebie. It wasn't something I planned on ordering, but I was pretty excited when I got it. My wife on the other hand, not so much. She puts up with a lot for me, with the tarantulas and the snakes and the centipedes and the scorpions, but there was always that one thing she didn't want in the house. Well, two things actually. She doesn't want roaches, and she doesn't want this particular species of spider. And honestly, growing up, this was always the spider I feared the most. And having one in my collection, I've really been able to learn a whole lot more about it, and a lot of those old wives' tales and misinformation and half-truths, it all got dispelled and, and helped me get over my fear and really begin to appreciate it. Now this spider is jet black with this bright red hourglass on its abdomen. It eats all kinds of different insects and has has a venom that can definitely hurt you if it were to bite you. Of course, the number one spookiest creature here in the Tarantula Collective is the Black Widow Spider. And one of the spookiest things about the Black Widow is that they make these really creepy cobwebs. And I find it interesting that nearly all significant bites from Black Widows are from the females. Now, though they're not fatal, Black Widow's venom is stronger than a rattlesnake. And most disturbing of all is that they practice sexual cannibalism. So after they mate, they usually eat the male. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me. And don't forget to leave a comment down below with any spooky creatures that I left off my list. As always, make sure you're subscribed and you share this video with your friends. And a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters that help make these videos happen. I upload videos every Tuesday for Tarantula Tuesday, so be sure you come back to check it out. And I will see you next Tuesday. Somebody send some help!